Hello, this is day two of the Sim Racing Expo 2022. I'm here with Thomas Jackemeyer, CEO, founder of Fanatec. How are you doing? Hi, how's it going? Servus. It's going what, sorry? <laughs> How is it going? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. I mean, this is like the hall is getting busy, right? We've got lots of our fellow sim racers here, all loving the sim rigs, all having fun on the rigs, getting like hands on with the Fanatec stuff. That must feel good, right? As a founder of a company, seeing this many people like touching your stuff, that's cool, right? Sim Racing Expo is, is always a very special moment because it's, uh, you, you get in contact with the fans, with the, I mean, you get so much appreciation, so much good feedback, of, of course, also some, some, some I, new ideas, etc. And it, to get in contact with our fans, with our customers, it's, it's, it's fantastic because actually then you know why, why you have all this stress and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the pain to go uh, through and develop all, this, uh, all these things. Makes it worth and, it, uh, right? It makes it worth it, yeah. Do you get to talk to many of like, the, the customers? I know you speak a lot yeah. to your, your other partners here. Did you manage to speak to the sim racers? Absolutely, absolutely. They, they come to me and I'm, I'm always happy to, to talk to anybody. And, 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 and yeah. That's great. So it's an exciting expo this year. There's a lot of new products. You've got you know, Alpine with their TRX, you've got um, Assetek with their ABS brake, and then you've got the Simucube force feedback brake. You've brought your uh, you've brought your Ford Puma rally box for the steering wheel that Sebastian Loeb actually raced in at the Monte Carlo rally. That's pretty freaking cool. And it's, there's a bit of a personal attachment there, right? Well, he did not just race it, he, he, won. Won. he, he won. won the <laughs> Rally Monte Carlo. And I have to say, I mean, when I, when I started this company 25 years ago, that, that somebody would have told me that um, somebody will win the Rally Monte Carlo in our steering wheel. I, I had no idea how, how, how far that goes. Yeah. Did, did, did you go? Did you Which? go to the rally? Did you watch? Uh, no, actually not this time. I was I was uh, there last last year, but not unfortunately not not, not this time. Yeah. Okay, so go on. What did Sebastian Loeb say about the button box? Did he, he liked it? Presumably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, he, I mean, for the drivers, most of all, it's uh, the most important thing is it doesn't break. It, it yeah. just does a job, and um, um, and then of course without this uh, steering wheel, he would have no, had no chance. Right? No, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all in the steering wheel, 100%. Only. <laughs> but this isn't the first time that you've created a product that actually works in a real world car, right? This is actually our third product. Yeah. Um, so we first, we started the development with the Bentley, but we showed uh, the BMW first, uh, which also won several uh, races in, 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 in GT3 racing. Uh, with the Bentley, we went to um, Pikes Peak. Yeah, very good. Cool. Um, so having the the, the real, uh, real race, uh, uh, our steering wheels and the real race cars, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that's incredibly cool. The idea of your product like being such a big part of real world motorsport because it's it's sim racing, right? It's simulating motorsport. So you're kind of you're kind of very visibly bridging the gap between sim racing and motorsport. But at the same time, as we'll see when we go through your 25 year displays, Fanatec is rooted in gaming, right? It is routing in gaming, but we are now moving more forwards being a, a motorsport company. And our mission is clearly to bring both worlds together. So I believe in, in the merger between sim racing and, and real world racing. Um, so we do this by, by the products, uh, put them put our products in the car, make it basically compatible with both, but also on the, on the racing series side, what we did with, with the Fanatec GD World, was that uh, basically the, re the the real world racers are racing in a simulator for championship points? Yeah, uh, I think that was another a, a groundbreaking move, and we are talking to more series, and there were going to be more racing series doing it like that. And, and our vision is that basically all major racing series at some point will have a sim racing element in there. I think that would be because this sim racing is the only esport which where you actually have the the transfer from the, the, the know-how you get in, in sim racing yeah. to the real world. I mean, it doesn't happen with any other esports. Yeah, we talk about that a lot actually on the podcast. We talk about how most professional like FIFA players probably couldn't last 90 minutes on the field and most like Call of Duty players probably wouldn't last very long in the SAS, right? Whereas you get a lot of sim racers going into motorsport and immediately being on the pace, right? Playing Counter-Strike doesn't make you a good terrorist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> okay, so your um, big, well, you're not, not so much an announcement, but kind of your big feature this year at the Expo is it's 25 years of Fanatec, which 
Congratulations, that's pretty freaking awesome just to, to have a company that's lasted 25 years and has been so dominant all the way through. I mean, there's, we can see loads and loads of brands here. Lots of people have moved into sim racing, but arguably you were one of the first to do it. So I'd like to take us around your 25 year stand and just nerd out for a little bit. Is that all right? Absolutely. Let's do it after you. So we're right in the middle of the expo hall and we've got these glass cases and each of the cases has got some pretty cool Fanatec products and we start all the way from the beginning. So this is the first one, right? Actually, this is the... Uh, 1998, this yeah. one? Okay, so talk us about 1998. But first of all, what were you doing in life when you, when you designed this? Like, d d presumably, you know, this, this wasn't full-time first. Like, what were you doing beforehand? How did you get into this? Why did you decide to make this? So I, well, I was, uh, so my dad had, had, was an entrepreneur. He had several businesses, uh, car dealership and, and, and construction site and whatever. So I was, I was uh, studying economics and what a son should do in, in order to take over the, the companies, blah, blah, blah. And uh, during my study, I was already ha having a, a, a bicycle business. Uh, just like with the, with the same background as the guys from Cube Control, by the way. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, um, and I was doing that. And then when I finished my study, I, by coincidence, uh, I mean during my study, already started some uh, video games. I, I liked si I liked uh, sim racing. I liked uh, um, uh, flight simulators as yeah. well. And I always thought, wow, um, having the a, a right good controller does make so much impact on. How on the immersion, how how mm -hmm. realistic it feels, yeah. how good it feels, and how much better you get. I mean, yeah. you have a you have a, a technical and, and and a performance advantage if you have a better controller. So I was like, well, I mean, this is a sort of cheating. If you buy a good controller, then you get better. And so I bought everything I I, I there was which was there back then, and which was not a lot. I mean, yeah. in uh, yeah, '97 yeah, yeah. there was not much. And then in at the Seabit show, uh, I met with a. A Taiwanese uh, guy who, who wanted to go from Amiga into um, uh, into uh, gaming, and um, yeah, and I was uh, he showed me his uh, devices and, and, and game pads, and actually he showed me this one at the, at the show already, and uh, what I think about, uh, and and I, I we already started the show, and they don't he, he came to to my hometown and. And eventually, I ended up working as an apprentice in his uh, subsidiary in, in Munich. Wow, okay. Which was later then, because in, after half a year, I was buying this company, and that was basically the uh, origin of, of oh, uh, Endor and Fanatec. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. So actually, some of these products were kind of, they were, they were what is now the Fanatec company, but actually it was pre-U. It, it was, it was um, the, uh, oh wow. <laughs> That sounds um, so. Um, blowing up in the hall right now. Yeah, is that a is that a drummer? It's either a drummer or something is the direct drive wheel is is going wrong. Uh, or it might be the beautiful sound of a motor. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, that's one way to get an attention. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it works, right? Everyone is flooding over there now. Oh. <laughs> Noises. <laughs> So um, yeah, so, we, so basically, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the very first ideas and concepts, uh, the game pads and, 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 and steering wheel. So this was um, created back then, and, and 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 refined. And then I I quickly came to the ideas. Uh, well, if you do it properly, I have to do our own brand yeah. and, and make it exclusive, uh, etc. We were um, um, so we were selling through normal distribu distribution, and then later on we, we made some steps like, hey, let's go direct, let's um, uh, make other cool stuff. And but I was always, you know, I was from the beginning, I wanted to raise the bar and make something cooler and better. Mm. And if you look at, at this um, uh, steering wheel right there, I mean, look at the CNC machined aluminum knob. Yeah, yeah. Nobody did this. No. I mean, back then you, you had some wheels like the Mad Cats. Also, also, Thrustmaster was around. Yeah. Um, but they were. It, it was mostly plastic, plastic and, right. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I was like, first we used this. Later on, we also came to a version with leather uh, for the first time. Mm -hmm. And and always. And then we added first feedback and and make the, well, the Porsche wheel was the first steering wheel which was wireless, wireless first right. feedback wheel yeah, yeah. with wireless pedals. 
nobody was ever crazy enough to do it again, making wireless <laughs> bells. And I thought it's it's a cool idea if you if you have it um, online. Uh, not all night. I mean, if you if you uh, uh, in a living room, yeah, <coughs> and um, uh, that that's quite convenient. Uh, but apparently, there were better ideas we had, and um, yeah, it, it's interesting because actually, if you look at you know, were you talking about the CNC um, yeah, gear, gear lever there? You kind of instantly from the very beginnings, you kind of tried to make it more than a toy, right? It was it, straight away. It was more about immersion, realism performance etc that is a small detail but you can see that is the beginnings of the DNA of the company right exactly I mean we're always uh, trying to get to get make it more more yeah more luxury more more authentic more mm. etc raising the bar the problem is always pricing yeah so we raise the price bar we, we always so I mean basically we developed the whole market from um, well that was 150 you I think even Deutschmarks back then and uh, now it's, it's pretty normal that somebody's paying two thousand for yeah, for his. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, the uh, if you think about our a podium racing wheel, uh, which is a PlayStation controller for one thousand eight hundred. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, if you boil it down to just that, it does seem crazy, right? But it, it, it I mean, it's 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 selling well, and, and there are a lot of people uh, who want exactly like that, and then nobody believed it back then. So yeah. that, that there's a market, but we also we also develop the market somehow. Yeah? I was about to say this is the thing. It's not a case of if you if you saw a market of people who played racing games and you're like, right, how many of those can I serve? It was like, why don't I grow this market by bringing more to it, right? Exactly. I mean, it was uh, now everything is, is is coming together because having cool hardware is one thing. You also need to have the right software. So now the so uh, in parallel the the, the software simulation. Was uh, was developing more and more, and now they are at a super high level where even the race drivers are saying, "Well, that's exactly it. I mean, that yeah. is how it feels to drive such a car." And uh, well, now it's. I think I think this is now why why sim racing is kicking up uh, like that because it's it's the perfect alignment of hardware and software together at the right time. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful marriage. Now I want to talk about this. So I was a huge Command and Conquer. Red Alert fan, Tiberian Sun, loved them all, sung hours and hours of my summer holidays into this game. It was beautiful. It was actually the first and only game I ever played with my dad. So it's got a good, it's got a, you know, it's got a place in my heart. I loved it. But I never knew this existed. So this is like a mission controller for the game. So essentially it's just like a, it, like I don't want to say it's a glorified mouse, but it's kind of, it's a more immersive mouse perhaps. It, it's a, it's a, it's a trackball. Um, which I thought was uh, because I, I love playing Command and Conquer as well. Yeah? Beautiful. Oh. Still now. Sometimes I yeah, still load yeah. it up now. Sure, it's great. Sure. Yeah. The old ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah the old yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Red Alert yeah. 2. I loved. Yeah. You know that that Kane yeah. was actually in, 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 at an EA event. He was sitting in one of our simulators and driving. I mean, I remember I mean, that. Like when you perfect. were playing that as a kid, you ever imagine that this guy, this scary-looking bloke with the really <laughs> red background and the really <laughs> red face, would eventually be sitting in a product? What was he like? I know we're, we're going oh, off on cool. a massive tangent now. But what, was, what was Kane like? Well, actually, a nice guy. Nice, not a scary guy. For, you know, for someone trying to uh, to dominate the world, he was, was actually a nice actually guy. Chilled. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we got this, so, and then we got this. Um, yeah, that, that the was, game board. Yeah, that was one of those weird uh, <laughs> <laughs> ways we. So, uh, so um, and 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 the uh, the easy pad, yeah, and then. Actually, we also had some. I'm, we had some some other cool stuff like the Game Boy controller. Uh, you put on your lap uh, the joysticks, uh, going in all kind of, of, of uh, direction. But the the um, um, yeah the, the, the wireless uh, wheels. I mean the the club spot pedals in this form. Yeah, we already had what what was it? Twelve years ago or something? That's crazy. It's, uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and 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 back then we already introduced the very first load cell, which I think was really Innovative, a, a right? milestone yeah, in, in, yeah. in the whole sim racing in, industry to make it pressure sensitive and not travel based in, uh, sensitive. Yeah, yeah 100. percent And I think the industry has has kind of followed your example. Now, not this one, but uh, one of them. So one of these ones over the back here. So, I'm assuming this uh, this see-through area at the back here. This is just for display. This is just for 25 years. But no, no, I no, mean, no, no. That would be cool if that was. No, no. That that was a product like that. So you can see into yeah, the gear. Yes. Okay, that, that was very... that was an, that was the the most high-end Xbox controller back then, the CSR wheel, um, and that is um, yeah, that was our our clubsport wheelbase. Um, 
another icon, um, the, the uh, uh, belt-driven wheelbase, which was um, so much refined that basically it, all, it almost was feeling like a direct drive. Yeah. But um, yeah. And again, like you know, you're, you're kind of going above and beyond. You're like pushing the boundaries of what uh, existed at this point. Now, back on the, the first stand, there were some there was some flight sim stuff. And then obviously that, that didn't continue. So that was a conscious decision to focus on one thing and get that right? One, one of the, I mean, we made a lot of mistakes, but also we made some good decisions. And one of them was that we have to focus. Yeah. Say, okay, sim racing only, that's it. I yeah. mean, we were, then uh, back then, we, we, we even made a mouse, a gaming mouse. So, right. and we got good reviews about it, yeah, but yeah. We, we were fighting against what, Razer and Logitech and Microsoft and whatever. Um, and we said, okay, well, um, uh, I like racing. Oh, racing games were the very first games out there. There will always be racing games, and the best way to play a racing game is with a steering wheel. Yeah. So that's why, I, and, and there's, and it, the technical level is high. There's mm -hmm. not too much competition. So this is why we said, okay, let's go for, for sim racing and, uh, and stick with it and, uh, and, and do nothing else. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big believer of focus. Uh, I think this is also what, what the company makes grow, uh, make, makes us big because, um, yeah, you you need to know what you, where your bottleneck is. You need to yeah, do one focus thing on it, do one do thing it right. and do it properly. Yeah. yeah. So, Fanatec generally is experiencing a lot more competition in the last year, year and a half, maybe maybe even two years than, than it has in the past. Right? Good thing. Well, uh, having an almost a monopoly is is, is certainly a, a, a nice position, but. On the other side, I mean, we just had the, the best year in the history of Endor. And from this second half on, we were almost sold out with all products. So I can't complain. Obviously, the cake itself is growing so much bigger yeah. than, uh, I don't care if, if somebody else is, 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 is inside, because I mean, there's, uh, there's enough space for everybody. So yes. this is why we are, we are, we are good friends with, with, with all of them, yeah. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, I've spoken to most of the, the founders of all the companies here, and that is one thing I get, is that it, there's a bit of a community going on. There's a lot of, you see a lot of products which um, they help each other kind of be compatible with each other, so you can kind of mix and match a little bit. So look, it, look, look what I have in my, my back. It's nice. the Heusingfeld. The, the uh, you know, I think that opener. image there kind of sums up the expo. It's like collaboration between two sim racing brands, and it opens beer. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what, so I'd like to. So, let's do some music for a second. A musical review on Gamer Muscles DJ set last night. <laughs> I missed it. Oh, you didn't? How? It was. I was in a stupid, <laughs> boring business meeting, and then I went oh, no. back on stage, and I missed the best part of the show. It was nuts. I mean, he was. Have you seen some videos of it? He was loving yeah, it. Of he course, was in the ring. He, yeah. he was on the mic. It was great. Okay, well, you're gonna have to watch the videos back. Thomas, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. It's been really great chatting to you. Like, just congratulations on 25 years. Thank you very much. And we'll chat soon. Cool. Thanks a lot. Cheers.